This is a sicha from Lakota Sichas, Chelik Tazayin, Parshas Ve'er, a sicha Beis. So the topic of the sicha is that in this week's parsha we learn how Moshe complained to Hashem that he was an Aral Svasayim, and so how can he speak to Parai, and how will Parai listen to him? And we learn about the response of Hashem to Moshe, and it's explained in Rashi. And in the sicha itself, the Rebbe will ask five questions on the complaint of Moshe and the response of Hashem, the way Rashi explains it, and the Rebbe will answer the five questions. In this week's parsha, in response to the complaint of Moshe Rabbeinu to Hashem, that Hey Nani Aralz Fosayim, I am Aralz Fosayim, Ve'ich Yishma Eli Pari, and how will Pari listen to me? So it says, Va'yemar Hashem Al Moshe, Hashem said to Moshe, Re'ein es Aticha Lekim LePari, see that I have placed you as someone with power over Pari. Va'aron Achicha Yineviyecha, and Aaron your brother, he will be your navi. And as Rashi explains, it means he'll be your interpreter. The Pasa continues, is You will say, you will speak over. Whatever I command you, and Aaron, your brother, he will speak to Pare. So Rashi copies the words, you will speak. And Rashi explains, Pam Achas, one time, call shluchas or shluchas, each and every shluchas that I give to you, the way you heard it from my mouth, and Aaron, your brother, he will say it over in a way that it can be understood in the ears of Pare. And this means that Rashi learns that it's not that Moshe spoke to Aaron, and Aaron spoke to Pari, but rather that also Moshe spoke to Pari. And it's just that they spoke in a different way. Moshe spoke briefly, and Aaron, Aaron spoke at greater length. And this is unlike what we learned in Parsha Shmois, that a response to Moshe saying, and also saying, that Hashem over there told him that he will speak to Aaron, and Aaron will speak to the Yidden. So in their talking to the Yidden, it wasn't directly from Moshe, but rather Moshe spoke to Aaron, and Aaron spoke to the Yidden. In that first time that they went to speak to the Yidden. We're not talking about the first time that they spoke to Pare, which we'll see later on. Also there, Moshe did speak to Pare. And we're not talking about that over here. The second time that they went, after they made the avoid the more severe, that over here we see clearly, as we learned in the Pesukim above, that Moshe also spoke. And the reason Rashi learns this way is for two reasons. Number one, it already says in the first of the two Pesukim, So what's the Pesuk now saying? The next Pesuk, It must mean that also Moshe spoke. And number two, we see it says clearly about Moshe and Aaron, Haim Hamadabrim, plural, El Pare. Both of them spoke to Pare. And there are six questions over here. Number one, earlier in Parsha Shmois, it says, and the first time that Moshe and Aaron went to Pari, it says, Bo Moshe Aaron, Moshe and Aaron came, Vayemru, and both of them said, El Pari to Pari, meaning that they both spoke to Pari. And it makes sense to say over there that since Moshe was Kvat Peo, Kvat Loshen, that he spoke briefly, whereas Aaron spoke at length. And if that's the case, if so, Rashi should either have explained what he says over here, over there. He should have explained, and then Aaron Either he should have explained it there, or if it feels that it's obvious that they spoke in this way, he shouldn't have explained it at all over here as well. Number two, and a greater difficulty is, what was the complaint of Moshe? If he already complained the first time that Hashem sent him, and on the other hand, if it is different, and therefore what Hashem advised him then, that Aaron Echicha, his brother, will, will, yield a chalepe, will be your mouth, and it, what he explained there isn't enough for this complaint, then how did Aaron Echicha Yineviecha, which Hashem advised him over here, how, is that, how did that answer him? It seems that Aaron Echicha Yineviecha is the same as who yield a chalepe. Number three, what's the proof to say that Moshe only spoke Pam Achas? Rashi emphasizes, Atatadaber Pam Achas. What's the proof that it was only Pam Achas? Number three, why does Rashi say Kol Shlichas or Shlichas and not Kol Tzivoy Vitzivoy, each and every command? What's the wording of Shlichas used over here? Number five, why does Rashi add Kefisha Shemaita Mipi? 
If Rashi didn't add that, what would we think? That Moshe Rabbeinu was going to say something different than what Hashem told him? And number six, why does Rashi say, Aaron and Yatimenu? What's the need for these two words, both Yamlitsenu and Yatimenu to pare? The explanation of all of this will be understood by first explaining the change in the complaints of Moshe. Earlier in Pasha Shmois, the complaint of Moshe was, Ki kvat kvat Over here, Moshe's complaint is, hey And if we look at Rashi, Rashi explains, kvat peh, kvat loshin, Meaning that Moshe had a difficult time speaking, but he was able to speak. Whereas over here, Rashi explains that Moshe was otums fosayim meaning that he was unable to speak. His mouth was completely closed from speaking. So Moshe realized at this point, first he thought he was Kvat Peo, Kvat Lashin, and then he realized that he is Otum Sfasayim. He's unable to talk at all. So when it comes to Kvat Peo, Kvat Lashin, then it's enough that Moshe will speak briefly, and Aaron will explain. However, now that Moshe is saying that he's Otum Sfasayim, there's no point in Moshe going. And even Adarab, it's a problem, because maybe... Pare will understand Moshe's silence that he's agreeing. He's agreeing that we should to add more work on the Yidin. And to this Hashem responded, Ata which is not just a command to Moshe that he should speak, but also a promise that even though Moshe is Otum Sfasayim and on his own he's unable to speak, Hashem is promising him Ata that Moshe will speak, that even though he is Aras Sfasayim, Hashem will give him the ability to speak. It would be a miraculous thing. And that's why Rashi says, Kol shlichos or shlichos, to emphasize that Moshe's speaking wasn't from his own power, but rather because this was a shlichos. This is a shlichos of Hashem. And it's also in continuation to a previous Rashi, where Rashi just told us a little earlier, Kidayani ulakayim divri And it's saying over here, that just Hashem is saying there, that just for me sending you is enough to give you the power to do the shlichos, and even more, the ability to speak as well. And now we also understand why Rashi says, Pam Achas. We said, we said, why does Rashi have to say only one time? And also, Kefisha Shamaita Mepi. Because since Moshe is not going now to Pare with the purpose of explaining something to him, but rather as a Shliach of Hashem, so if he's coming as a Shliach of Hashem, then these are very important parts. He's just a Shliach. That's his whole identity, that he's a Shliach of Hashem. So the Shliach has to be perfectly matched with the Meshaleach. It's only Pam Achas, not to add any more times. And it has to be Kefisha Shemaita Mipi, the exact wording itself. However, the question is that since Hashem spoke to Moshe, there's a question over here. He spoke to Moshe in Lashon HaKadosh. And as we learned earlier, Pari didn't know Lashon HaKadosh. So how did Pari understand Moshe? And for this reason, Rashi says that Aaron served for two things, both Yamlitsenu and Yatimenu. And like we learned already, that the Melitz that was between Yosef and his brothers, his job was to translate, to translate from Lashon HaKadosh so that, so that Yosef could also understand. And this was the job of Aaron over here, two things. Number one, to translate to Pare, as well as to explain it to Pare. However, there's a question over here. If Pare couldn't anyway understand Moshe, what was the purpose of Moshe talking to him? And it was so important to the extent that Hashem gave him a special ability to do so, because on his own, he was Aras Fasayim, Otum Fasayim, unable to talk. And so the answer to this is, that this comes in the context of what Hashem told Moshe just earlier, that Rashi explains that this means that he is a shayfet v'reide lirdeis b'makas v'yasurim. Moshe's role is not to explain things. That's Aaron's role. Moshe's role was to have control and power over Pare and to be maka him, to be reide him with makas and yasurim. And so here the point was that Moshe should speak, it should be the words of Hashem, and it should be done in a harsh way, that he should speak in such a way that Pari should feel that energy that Moshe is coming as a force that's going to bring Makas and Yasurim. The Yenishal Torah in the Ira 
are presented at great length in the Sicha, and here we'll present it briefly. So from Yenei Shultera, Chassidus explains regarding Re'enes Aticha Likim Lepare, that when the klippas are in their full force, then even a tzaddik doesn't have the power to break them. And it's only in the power of Hashem, who is a kol yachol, that they can be broken. And that's the meaning of it says over here, Re'e nesaticha likim lepare. Re'e means that it's a chidush, and it's a plia. It's a wonder that even though Pari was still in full force, to the extent that even one slave couldn't escape Mitzrayim, still Hashem says, Re'e nesaticha likim lepare. Hashem gave Moshe the power over Pari to the extent that he was able to be shayfed v'reide l'erdoise b'makas v'yasurim, complete power over him. And this is given to Moshe since as the nasi adar, which is a mamutza, the power of Hashem comes through him. That's the role of Moshe Rabbeinu. He's a mamutza between Hashem and us, and therefore the power of Hashem comes through him, the power of Hashem being a kol yachol, and able to rule over Mitzrayim. And that's why Aaron wasn't enough, and it wasn't necessary for power to understand Moshe. It wasn't enough to send just Aaron. And when Moshe was sent, he was sent speaking in Lashon HaKadosh. Since this is not about explaining something and working with Pari, but it was a special force to break Pari. And for breaking Pari, you have to have a force that's higher than our Aaron. It has to be the force of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Nasi Adar. And it doesn't have to be in a way that he understands because he wasn't working with Pari. He wasn't elevating Pari. It was about breaking Pari. And that's also why it says, Kefi Shashamaitai Mipi. It's similar to what we say that it's Shechina Mendaberis Metech Grene. And Hashem is telling Moshe, Kefi Shashamaitai Mipi, that Moshe is a continuation of that mouth of Hashem. And this also explains why this approach only started after Moshe said Aral Sfasayim, and not after he said Kikvat Peh or Kvad Loshin. As Chassidus explains, that Kvad Peh or Kvad Loshin is an expression of Bittal. It's because of Moshe's Bittal that he wasn't able to also speak. Like it says, I did the Lemivla Leipolit. When something is absorbing, you can't give. Moshe Rabbeinu was in such Bittal that he didn't have the ability to also be a Mashpia. So based on that, it means that Aral Sfasayim is an even greater Bittal. Because Moshe Rabbeinu not only didn't, had difficulty speaking, he wasn't able to speak at all. And that allows him to be, since he's completely bittal, he has the ability to now literally give over the words of Hashem. Now, a side point the Rebbe point says over here is, one may ask, how can it be that Pari heard the shluchas directly from Hashem and Yidin heard it through Aaron? And even though we could explain that they didn't need it, but still, how could it be that he had a higher level? And the answer is that when Aaron gave it over to the Yidin, he was able to give it over in the form of a mamutza that doesn't change. Just like the just like that it says that Moshe Kibbal Torah Messinai Masar Yeshua, there was no change in that Torah. But not the Pari. If it went to Pari, then it would have to be in such a way that Aaron ended up making it less. And that's why regarding Moshe speaking to the Yidin, regarding Moshe speaking to the Yidin, through Aaron it says, Hu Again, the idea is as if it's, like we said before, it's an extension of Moshe. But when it was for Pari, it says, which as Rashi says, it means, meaning that it's being translated, explained, it's already being removed from him. And the hayra from this is, that when the Nefesh Lekis is in Golos, in the Nefesh of Bahamas, in a strong way, then a person has to be Yargiz, you have to use force. And it's the power of the inner Moshe that each person has. And especially the Nasi Adar himself, when it comes to something larger, that he has the power to break all things that cover over Kedusha. And this is also an answer to those who claim that since we're in such a great darkness, how can we fulfill the demand of the Rebbeim to spread the learning of Chassidus and going in the ways of Chassidus in every place when there's so much darkness? So we have to know that there's a Moshe in every generation. And especially since ge- this generation is connected to the Nishamas of the Dara Midbar, like it says that the Nishamas of our generation are Gilgal of those Nishamas, and through the connection to the Nasi Adar, we have nothing to worry about, and just like then, the Eden left Biyad Ramah, also now we will leave Golos Biyad Ramah.